My name is Jian Yinghe from Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway. First of all, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Committee in European Structural Integrated Society, especially the ECS President, Professor Francisco Acuello, for organizing this first virtual European Conference on Fracture and for inviting me to present our work here. My talk today will be nanomechanics for metacoated polymer particles. First, I will introduce you the composite particles in the microelectronics application, especially in the electronic packaging field, to show you why we are interested in the mechanics of the single particles. And then it's the new methods we have developed for the single particle characterization Experimentally, it's nano-indentation based macro compression and computationally cost graining molecular dynamics simulations. Then we go to the mechanical properties of the single particles by using two developed methods in terms of cross-linking effect, size effect, and metallization effect. Then we move to outlook and concluding remarks. So Nowadays, everybody is using the mobile PC laptop, especially in the spring home office period. The daily communication relies a lot on the online platforms. So we can see those electronic devices has dramatically changed our daily life. Inside those devices, there are a lot of parts and components need to be connected together which is called electronic interconnect. How to do that? Old days, the electronic industry used the soldering technology. Traditional solder consists of lead, which is toxic. So in 2008, EU banned use of lead in the electronics industry. Other lead-free solders require a very high temperature in soldering process. That means high heat input, large thermal mismatch, and high residual stress. That can cause early failure of devices. So the electronic industry continuously look for the new solutions for the electronic interconnect. One of the alternative is the conductive adhesive. As its name indicated, we can use the adhesive to glue the components together. Depends on if there is failure particles and the volume fraction of the failure particles. There are mainly three categories of conductive adhesive. Without any failure particles, called non-conductive adhesive. With the metal particles, but low volume fraction, so the electrical current only go through vertically, not horizontally. That's called anisotropic conductive adhesive. Using the metal flake with a high volume fraction, so the electrical current will go all the directions. This is called isotropic conductive adhesive. Both ACA and ICA use metal as the filler. Compared to the adhesive, metal is very rigid. So there is a structural integrated problem in the devices. And also, large volume fraction of metal means a high cost for the industry. So industry wants to find other solutions. Around 15 years ago, Norwegian industry has the new ideas to use metal-coated polymer particles to replace the metal particle or the metal flake in the ACA or ICA. You can easily see the advantage here. In those composite particles, we have large volume of the polymer. So the property of this polymer is similar to the adhesive. We avoid the structure integrated problems. And also, most of the particles is the polymer. We save a lot of metal, so we save the cost. And in the design of metal-coated polymer particles in conductive adhesive, usually there is a big polymer core with size from 3 to 30 micron, and metal coating thickness 
from 30 to 200 nanometer. We could have a single layer of metal or bilayer metals. And during the application, of course, we want the electrical current density as large as possible. That means we will need a large deformation of the particles to ensure the high contact area. So mechanical pressure and heat are applied in this process. However, we found out the failure of those particles in different patterns. Sometimes cracks on the metal coating, sometimes even complete the rupture of the polymer core. So the central research problems here is related to predict and optimize the multi-physical properties of the individual particles, like a electromechanical, thermomechanical, or even electrical, thermal, and mechanical properties. They are coupling. I link those properties to the molecular structure of the particles, and then in the upper level, to the performance of a whole electronic components. In the last 15 years, together with the Norwegian industry, our group has carried out the research in all aspects in this field. But today, I will only introduce you the mechanical properties of the single particles. And think about that. We have the particle in spherical shape, composite structure, and uh, around a micrometer size scale. So it's difficult to measure that by conventional mechanical testing method. It's bared by indentation, which has a sharp tip penetrated into initially flat surface. Our case is actually an inverse indentation. So we think if we could design the flight punch to compress spherical particle, then by using the high resolution of the nano indentation, we can upturn the mechanical behavior of the particles. And by applying the simple model, we can upturn the nominal strength string of the particles. Here are the examples to apply the indentation-based compression on the 3.8 micrometer particles. Left figure shows that load and displacement curve of uncoated particles. Uh, we can see that uh, the loading part of the indentation on four particles from the same batch has uh, almost identical curve which demonstrated that indentation is a powerful tool for this particle compression. And the red figure shows the comparison of metal-coated and uncoated particles. Those coated one has a bilayer structure, 30 nanometer gold plus 7 nanometer nickel. Uh, we see that initially, metal coating has a strengthening effect to the particles. And after this displacement burst, two particles behave almost identically. So we can imagine that this displacement burst is connected to the coating, cracking, or the failure. Later, we carried out the compression inside of the scanning electron microscope by collaboration with Kyoto University. So we can easily observe what happened to the particles during the deformation simultaneously. And now we can see that several cracks, one here and another on the back, occurred on the metal coating. And that corresponds to each this displacement burst. So confirm that it is the deformation behavior of the particles. And computationally, we have developed the cost screening molecular dynamics models to save the computational time. In short, uh, we apply this uh, diamond lattice for the carbon back chain of the polymers. Then we use the random selection, let the polymer chain randomly work to choose the carbon position. And then we combine that the hydrogen with its uh, carbon back chain as a super bead 
So in the terminal, we have CH3, and in the middle, we have the CH2. And here is a final model. After we build up the polymer chains, we throw it into the box, apply the hydrostatic pressure to form uh, particles there. And then we can also run the non based uh, compression to those particles to demonstrate the experimental results and also find out the physical mechanism behind the deformation of the particles. Let's see some results in terms of the cross-linking effect, size effect, and metallization effect. First is the pure polymer particles without the metal coating. So this series of particles have the same size, five micrometer in diameter, but a different cross-linking density varied from 2% to 55%. We know that cross-linking density will influence the elastic modulus and hardness of the polymer. And from the compression, stress, and string curve, we can see that two slightly cross-linked particles behave very differently from the three highly cross-linked ones. Uh, we could even see uh, almost like the yielding process of the slightly cross-linked ones, but not uh, on the highly cross-linked ones. And after the compression from the same observation, uh, we can see that uh, slightly cross-linked particles, uh, they will have plastic deformation with the creasing and even large residual strain. Uh, no matter at uh, which force level, this residual strain can be observed. Well, for highly cross-linked ones, in the middle range deformation, after the compression, if we unload, particle actually will recover. Unless we compress the particles to a very high force level, then the particle fracture happened. So the failure pattern of the slightly and highly cross-linked particles are quite different. Then we can conclude, for the slightly cross-linked particles, it will deform with the plastic deformation, but the highly cross-linked ones is perfectly viscal elastic deformation process. And we verify that with the cost graining modeling process, we create the model with cross-linked, branched, uh, linear polymer chains. Then we can see almost the same process that the linear particles is quite soft, while cross-linked ones is quite uh, uh, strong. And from the snapshot during the compression process, uh, we can easily see that the linear polymer chain they don't have the interlocking between each other, so it's easy that the polymer chain will diffuse around to accommodate the deformation. But for the networked particles that the polymer chain connect with each other, so they will deform by extension of this segment between cross-linking points. But afterwards, the deformation is limited. While that branch ones locate in the middle, there is some mechanical interlocking happened, but not that strong as the cross-linked ones. Next is the particle size effect. So in this theory, we have all the particles with the same cross-linking density, but the size varies from 2.6 to 25 micrometer. And we compress all the particles to same deformation level, 5% or 10%. And of course, that we obtain different force and displacement curve here. But when we convert the force and displacement curve to stress and strain curve, interestingly, we see a significant size effect that smaller particles behave stronger here. And no matter which deformation level we reach, and this applies. And uh, if we cut to certain deformation level, here we choose uh, 4%. So now we can plot the curve like this. 
how the normalized uh, compression stress changes with the particle size. And we can see that the size effect uh, become more obvious. The smaller the diameter, the harder the particles. And also size effect is influenced by the strain rate due to the viscoelastic nature of the polymer. So we observed this size effect in experiment, but then what kind of mechanism behind that to govern this size effect? This doesn't align with the continuum mechanics theory. So we borrow the cross graining molecular dynamic simulation again. We build up the particle model with different size from 5 nanometer to 40 nanometer. And interestingly, we found out a similar size effect with the experiment that the smaller particles is much stronger than the larger ones. And by detailed analysis in the molecular model, and we found out that the surface contribute a lot to the bulk behavior. Think about that particles have different size, but a constant surface thickness. So this surface thickness contribution to the smaller particles is much more pronounced than that to the larger particles. And then we found out that this surface energy relation with the particle size, and which can while explain the size effect we observed in the experiment. So we attribute the size effect to the surface energy contribution to the system. And in this cross-linking effect and size effect, we focus on pure polymer particles without a metal coating. Next, we move to metal coated polymer particles to see how metallization will influence the mechanical properties of the particles. And we choose to show two examples here. Both have the same polymer core, same size, same type of polymer, but the metal coating are very different. The first example has a bilayer metal coating. The inner nickel layer is to provide mechanical adhesion to the polymer core and an electrical conductive path, while the outer gold layer is to protect the nickel and strengthen the electrical conduction. Uh, here you can see that the nickel thickness is uh, 120 nanometer, while gold has 30 nanometer. So nickel layer is much thicker than the gold. The mechanical property is mainly dominated by the nickel. The second example is uh, pure silver coated particles and the silver coating thickness is around 140 nanometer comparable with the first example but their strength string behavior look very different at the beginning that nickel coated particles is much stronger than the silver coated ones and also that nickel coated particles has a obvious displacement burns as we mentioned it's related to the coating cracking. Well, that's the silver particles the same deform continuously. And at the end that uh, these two particles uh, seem uh, well collapse to one identical behavior. Combining with the uh, SAM observation, uh, we can see that uh, the nickel coated particles has the crack initiation at a quite an early stage. And also that the cracking and delamination happened here. We observed a big crack on the metal coating. But for silver coated ones, we captured a crack initiation at a quite a large deformation. And also we don't see any big crack. Instead, we see multiple hairline cracks here. And after unloading, actually we also observed that uh, for those hairline cracks, they will heal. So it will not really influence the structural integrity of these particles, as well as their electrical conduction path. But for the nickel coated ones, this big crack will really influence the structural integrity 
and electrical conduction. So here we can conclude that nickel-contained coating often have brittle fracture, while silver or pure gold coating, they will have ductile behavior without a rupture. So from the application point of view, that silver or gold coated particles is preferred. So we also carried out the cost graining molecular dynamic simulation to verify this metallization effect. Here I only show you that the nickel coated particles, how the mechanical property will change with the coating thickness. And we have the nickel free case and also different thickness of the nickel coating. And the total particle size is just 10 nanometer and the thickest nickel coating is 1.5 nanometer. And from the stress strain curve, we see that uh, the metal coating will definitely strengthen the polymer particles. And we also observed this popping happened on the curve, corresponds to the fracture of the coating. However, in the simulation that this uh, popping or displacement burst happened at a very large deformation, we attribute it to a perfect metal structure in the simulation. Well, in experiment, since the coating has a lot of defects, so the cracking happened much earlier than in the simulation. But still, it confirms this metallization effect. By comparing the experiment with the simulation, and we can see that in experiment before and after the compression, the cracking and delamination of the coating can be observed. In the simulation that we see a similar cracking process, but due to the very short time scale and the very fast response of the polymer core, we didn't see the delamination. All these polymer chains just run out of the, the particles. Here shows the comparison of the cracking process of the particles by experiment and computational simulation. So experimentally, by the in-situ SAM compression, we successfully captured crack initiation and its propagation towards two contact areas. And then it's the final cracking and delamination from the polymer core. And computationally, those snapshots show very similar process as the experiment from the initiation, propagation, and the final cracking. And this confirms that uh, the two methods we have developed, nano-indentation-based compression and the cost graining molecular dynamic simulation are the useful tools to generate knowledge about mechanics of the individual particles. And so far, I have showed you the cross-linking effect and the size effect on the mechanical properties of the uncoated polymer particles, as well as metallization effect on mechanical properties of coated particles. And even just from mechanics point of view, that you can see there are a lot of questions to answer. And even more complex, as we mentioned before, that this particles application in the conductive adhesive for the electronic packaging is a multi-physics problems. This particle will undergo mechanical pressure, electrical current, and heat in the application. So the problem of the coupling this mechanical, electrical, and thermal field is very complex and uh, wait us to further investigate. Uh, so far, our group has uh, carried out uh, the mechanical, electrical, and thermal characterization of the particles separately, and also the coupled electromechanical and thermal mechanical behavior of those particles. Hopefully that I can show you in another occasion. Let's go to the concluding remarks. 
for the characterization of the single micron-sized particles, we have developed two new methods. Experimentally, it's a flat punch based nano indentation, which can be considered as the inverse nano indentation. And using this method, we can probe the polymer microstructure interface failure between the metal and the polymer and to the global mechanical properties of the individual particles. Computationally, we have developed a semi-crystalline lattice method for the cost graining molecular dynamic model of the single polymer particles. And these two methods complement with each other to provide a deep understanding for the mechanics of the individual particles. And using these two methods, we have found out the new mechanisms and relations for the particles. For example, with increasing the cross-linking density, we can realize the ductile to brittle transition of the polymer particle behavior. The surface energy of the particles is responsible for the size effect observed during the compression. By depositing different types of the metal, and we could have ductile or the brittle fracture of the metal coating. Uh, which will influence the structural integrity and the electrical conduction of the metal-coated particles. So in the real applications, we'll need to combine this knowledge to design the required property of the particles. And currently, the developed new methods have served as the daily basis for the Norwegian particle industry to quantify the particles that they produced. And the new mechanisms uh, we have found out help the design of the particles in the conductive adhesives. So by this acknowledgement, I would like to thank my collaborators from the national industry and international research groups. I also like to thank my funding agency, NTNU and Research Council of Norway here. At the end, I would like to thank you for your attention, for listening my talk. And I very much look forward to meeting you on 29th of June online for this first virtual European conference on fracture. Thank you.